Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our fourth installment of the Bender Summer Webinar Series, Putting Your Volunteer Experience to Work. My name is Jamie Watts. I'm an account manager here uh, with Bender Consulting. Thank you very much for tuning in to our webinar today. Um, we're excited to highlight uh, volunteer experience as part of our um, work and career capture strategy. Uh, as part of our webinar series, so we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, first, I wanted to just say a few background things around Bender Consulting. If you're not familiar with Bender Consulting or this is your first time attending our summer webinar series, uh, we are an international leader in, in disability employment with over 20 years of experience in recruitment uh, of people with disabilities for both the private sector and the federal government. We are headquartered in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but we operate in approximately 28 states nationwide with the private sector um, and nationwide with the federal government. Uh, a few words about our CEO and President Joyce Bender. She has been both the uh, past chair of the American Association of People with Disabilities and of the National Epilepsy Foundation. She does have a weekly internet talk radio show, Disability Matters with Joyce Bender, which airs every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on voiceamerica.com. If you're interested in uh, listening to past shows, uh, she welcomes disability advocates, political leaders, and, and business executives. And all those shows are archived on our website, benderconsult.com. Uh, what you will see here is a representation of some of our private sector customers as well as federal uh, customers. Uh, we work extensively with several insurance providers, for example, and technology providers, uh, as well as federal agencies like uh, the National Security Agency, uh, the National Geospatial Agency, and several others, including the U.S. Office of Personal Management, uh, where we provide uh, screening for candidates for the OPM shared list for people with disabilities. So. Uh, federal hiring managers can access that resource to align uh, people with disabilities with opportunities in the federal government through OPM. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll move forward. Um, you'll see we have a, uh, four sort of separate quadrants in terms of our business. Um, primarily, you know, the things that we're going to talk about fall into our talent programs area of recruitment of people with disabilities our careers to be a uh, one-year career experience program, uh, college partnership program, so if we're welcoming any uh, service providers or uh, colleges and university representatives, uh, you know, we do extensive outreach to those type of communities to populate our talent programs area. Um, so most of your interaction with us will come uh, through that venue. Today, though, we want to focus really on uh, volunteer experience and how to leverage that as part of getting a job. Uh, so first of all, uh, how do you uh, go about finding the appropriate volunteer experience to leverage on your resume? And then how do you talk about that in a job application and ultimately on the interview to secure a successful position uh, in the private sector or with the federal government. So those are all things that we're going to talk about and highlight today. Okay, excellent. First, uh, volunteering the finding the appropriate volunteer experience. So how do you go about finding that appropriate uh, volunteer spot for you? What are some of the things that you can do? Um, so what we found in our work uh, as a leader in disability employment and serving uh, the business community as well as you know outreach to different service providers is that many people with disabilities face uh, a lack of experience barrier. So you need uh, experience to get that kind of that first job, but you can't get anyone to give you a job without experience, or you can't uh, qualify for a job without experience. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. Um, and then so uh, this is particularly the case for individuals that are entry level in nature. So um, it's really easy once you've worked to kind of talk about what you did in previous jobs 
and and how you've demonstrated your business skills and your technical skills or whatever the uh, area is that you might be looking into. But but how do you do that if you haven't had the opportunity to work before? So that really does create a lack of experience barrier for those of us with disabilities. Um, and so this is why volunteer experience, you know, can be critically important in addressing uh, this issue. So. You know, if at first you can't be paid to use your expertise, if you can at least volunteer to, to use that expertise and gain some demonstrated accomplishments, then that can help you qualify for the next job. So those are some of the things we're going to look at today during this session. I apologize. I'm a little frozen. Gerald, would you mind just taking over? Ah, here, I'm sorry, it was just taking a minute. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, technology is wonderful. Okay, so, so we're going to look at, uh, how to, again, how do you identify that appropriate volunteer experience? So the first thing that I would say is you want to work on aligning your volunteer experience to your field of interest. So what is it that you're passionate about? What is it that you want to get into as a career? You know, is it IT? Is it communication? Is it engineering? What is the area that you kind of want to get into? And look at the, the nonprofit or the volunteer experiences that you can lend those expertise to. And, and really, frankly, if you're not sure what that is, look uh, for ways that you can provide a transferable skill. So again, information technology. Maybe you can build a website for somebody or rebuild computers for an organization that gives out uh, computers to, to individuals that cannot afford them. Uh, office administration, so maybe you can volunteer doing paperwork or filing or uh, design of flyers. You know, what is it that you need to align to um, that will give you sort of that expertise? And then tap into your network. So talk to your friends, talk to your family, uh, join social media, tap in your network and really see what opportunities are available to you. Um, again, if, you, if you're really interested in a specific cause or a specific area, you might do a little bit of research and see what organizations are out there that you could even be talking to about a uh, specific volunteer experience. If you are a student at a university or a college, uh, attend activity fairs. I know when I was an undergraduate student, every fall we had what's called an activity fair um, to kind of showcase different organizations where students could become involved. So attend those different things in your community or on campus. Um, network with, at different events to connect with, with different folks. You know, as you're talking to folks, um, you know, let them know that you might be interested in a volunteer opportunity or a shadowing opportunity really to just get exposure uh, to the organization and some field experience. Because really, if you express interest, in, in volunteering and offering your services and your expertise on a volunteer basis, there aren't a lot of organizations that are going to turn that down. So really think about um, you know, where you might want to align and speak up uh, about ways that you can give back. You know, talk, be prepared to talk about, hey, I'm skilled in web design. I might be able to help you build a website. Or, hey, I might be able to help you build a listserv. Or, I heard that you need some people to do paperwork. So, th so those are some areas where you can just kind of speak up and be proactive and offer to pitch in. And then if you do align with volunteer experience, make sure that you're keeping those commitments. So showing up and completing tasks that are assigned to you on time or ahead of schedule. Because if you, if you do that, you know, your volunteer coordinator or different colleagues might be able to serve as a reference. But if you don't keep some of those commitments, they're not going to be able to do that. So it's critically important that if you commit to doing a volunteer activity, that you stick to doing that. Okay. Um, and then in terms of uh, how do you make that part of the application process? So you, you've gotten in. You've identified your volunteer experience of choice. You're, you're putting demonstrated accomplishments on your resume. How do you incorporate that into your uh, job application? So that's the thing that we're going to look at next. So remember what I said, that volunteer um, opportunities really present the opportunity for, as you're working alongside a colleague, with a coordinator, different people that you come into contact with in the community, 
those type of uh, activities might lend you to just be able to talk to someone and share information about companies in your community that are hiring. Uh, so that's critically important. You know, when I have applied for uh, jobs, every single job I've ever gotten has never been because I applied online somewhere. It was because I knew someone and talked to someone. So um, it's critically important to use those volunteer experiences to be talking to those connections. Um, and then sometimes, you know, and I, I'll say this and I'll stress this, it's critically important. Not every time, but sometimes volunteer experience can be used to substitute for uh, work experience. So if a job description, for example, says you need one year of experience and you don't have one year of paid work experience, um, you're, you're still going to be able, um, in some cases, to apply the volunteer experience to that work experience requirement. You just need to be careful about how you talk about it in your cover letter and in your resume, for example, and let people know that even though it was volunteer, you were spending time honing your skill and, and building your craft. And, and that's why those things can be applied and why they're relevant. Um, again, uh, volunteer experience uh, indicates an area of expertise, particularly uh, if you're trying to break into a new area. So say that you're a communications professional and now all of a sudden you, you've decided that, oh, I want to go back to school for IT, and so maybe you have a year or two of uh, communications experience, but you don't have any um, IT uh, paid work experience because you're, you're the new graduate of that field. What do you do to kind of match up to that experience requirement? Well. Um, if, if on your resume you're able to put down that on the weekends while you were attending class, you volunteered again you know, for an organization that rebuilt computers, for example, for veterans, then, then that's a good way to show that you have technical expertise uh, in that area even though you weren't getting paid for it. So that might, again, align with you getting uh, access to the opportunity. Again, this is a way to address essential functions of the job and requirements for the position. So I always tell people, no matter what you're applying for, you want to speak to the essential functions and the requirements of the job. So in your cover letter, as you're going through, and it says you know you need a specific technology or exposure to a certain uh, workplace system, maybe you've gotten that through your volunteer experience. Make sure you. Highlight that in your cover letter or your other materials, your application, for example, or your resume. Uh, again, I said this once before, but assuming that you keep your, all your volunteer commitments and follow through on them, volunteer coordinators and supervisors uh, are great professional references because remember, you can't have a family member or a, or a um, friend as a reference, you really want to keep those professional. So you want, want to talk to individuals that have worked with you in a professional capacity and, and can speak to your demonstrated accomplishments and ability to deliver on time ahead of schedule. Um, again, volunteerism is seen as a leadership quality. So a lot of these companies have uh, programs for uh, first time graduates or recent graduates. and so. Um, a lot of those are looking for, even though the person will be entry level and that's the expectation of the organization, they're really looking for someone with leadership quality and nothing speaks to leadership better than somebody who's willing to take out of their own time to give back to somebody else. So, so volunteerism can really promote leadership qualities. And again, uh, the last point on here, companies are really looking at the different so corporate social responsibility efforts. So when companies partner with other companies, they look at uh, you know, what, what kind of work are they doing in some of the areas we care about, the environment, employment of people with disabilities. They look at causes like this. So aligning with candidates is no different than aligning with companies. It's in that you, know, you really want to look to, is, does this person, are they socially minded like we are here? because that's what makes them a good fit for this organization. Uh, so all of those things are critically important. Um, again, I want to just highlight a little bit uh, in terms of the successful interview. Um, 
in terms of volunteerism. So, you know, we've aligned it with our appropriate volunteer experience. We have um, delivered on that. We've talked about it through the application, put it on our resume. But how do we actually talk about it when we're in the interview, dealing with the person one-on-one? -on -one? How do we talk about that and, and in terms of how it relates to a demonstrable uh, work setting? So that's what we're going to highlight a little bit today. Um, so again, it, it just provides the opportunity to contribute to a real world environment. Um, again, some of these, some of the things that you learn from a volunteer experience um, that you can speak to in an interview, you know, one of the things I would say is that, you know, I had to keep my volunteer commitment. So I was required to, to be there every day when I said I was going to be there, arrive on time, do the things that I was assigned to do on time or ahead of schedule and attend all meetings associated with that volunteer commitment. So I, I know what it's like to deliver on an organization with limited resources, people, money, and time. Um, again, it made me, uh, you know, I had to dress appropriately. I had to dress for the workplace. I had to dress for the volunteer opportunity. You know, this is a professional opportunity that I took very seriously. I had to multitask because I had a lot of things that were assigned to me that I had to deliver on time in a very short order, so I had to be a successful multitasker. I had to meet deadlines, you know, because I was a lot of times in volunteer organizations, you know, you don't have a lot of people um, that are able to give their time, so you'll wind up on very small teams, so volunteers will take on, you know, very substantial tasks, and so you had to really uh, the organization's counting on you to meet those deadlines and do so reliably. Um, again, depending on the type of volunteer work you're doing, maybe you're working at a phone bank. You know, if, if for example, you're in a, a political volunteer, they do a lot of phone banking. So you have to be able to work with customers on, or interpersonal skills uh, over the phone. So all these things can be applied to, um, you know, a universal work setting. So in every work setting uh, that you have, all these things are going to be critically important. Um, again, access to workplace technology. So if you haven't worked before and you haven't had access to Microsoft Office, for example, or Internet Resource, or really using Office technology, uh, volunteer experience can help you do that. And then again, you know, writing and communication skills. So m depending on the internship, maybe you had to write a press release. Uh, maybe you had to write a flyer or design a flyer. Um, at the very least, though, you probably had to communicate via email. So again, these things can give you access to how to write a professional email, how to write a professional document. And so all these things that I've just gone over here are things that you could talk about in a general sense because all these things are going to apply to any work setting. Um, no matter what type of job you're applying for, you have to do most or all of these things uh, in the workplace setting. So um, you know, especially if you're going for your first job, these are critically important things that you can highlight that the volunteer experience help you uh, gain experience doing. And then there is a little bit more specific information uh, regarding, you know, how, how do you talk about your specific area of expertise? Um, so, uh, and this relates to your specific field of interest. So again, um, you know, again, when you're working on small teams, uh, you have to take ownership of projects and initiatives and really just run with them. Uh, maybe again, speaking to specific areas of interest, maybe. If you're working in a technology industry, you're learning more complex programming language or technical skills. So maybe um, you had basic HTML, but because you were building a specific website or uh, a specific filing system, you had to get more technical with your uh, information there. Um, again, depending on the type of work you're doing, and this is why we say you know, this is where you get into the industry specific or the skill specific area that you're talking about. So maybe you're a financial person and you've never worked with a specific financial system that's very common. For example, cost point is a very common uh, financial system uh, within the corporate environment. So maybe you're 
volunteer experience gave you exposure to working with that. Um, again, building strategic community relationships. So with a lot of volunteer experiences, they need people on the street. Uh, passing out flyers, giving information to people, uh, just assisting in different ways. So you're really making a lot of strategic community relationships, which is critically important in a lot of uh, different uh, positions. If you're applying, you know, a lot of times they'll say, you know, extensive knowledge of the Pittsburgh community because, because they want people who know, um, who know people because that helps you get things done. So the ability to, even if you don't already know people, but the ability to build a strong relationship with someone is critically important. Uh, management skills. Um, if you're provided the opportunity to manage projects and teams, and not everybody will, but if you emerge as a strong volunteer um, and they see that you're well organized and you get along well with the team, you might be given the opportunity to manage projects. Uh, or manage other volunteers, and that can be critically important when saying, hey, you know, I wasn't paid to do this, but I did have the opportunity to manage a staff, a volunteer staff or a coordinated volunteer staff. You know, that speaks very highly about the person's ability to organize and, and communicate with people. So um, those are all critically important. Um, Again, you can collaborate with mentors and colleagues who can share expertise. So like if you're shadowing someone, um, you know, they, they might have experience that you don't have. So, so they can give you tips, tips and tricks about how to do things uh, that you would have not have otherwise gotten. And you can talk about that. Um, and then again, you have, uh, you know, as you volunteer, you, you develop different things. Uh, white papers, reports, uh, campaigns, social media posts, blogs, videos, the different things that you work on and you create are deliverables. Now keep in mind, uh, those will be owned by the organization, but with somebody's permission, you could use those as, for example, writing samples if you had to present a writing sample during the interview. These are things with permission of your uh, volunteer supervisor that you could submit as writing samples uh, four different positions. So just keep that in mind as you are navigating kind of through this process. Okay. So I just want to uh, leave up here a few volunteer resources. We talked a lot about um, you know some of the ways to to get involved uh, and find a volunteer opportunity. Um, but I, I did that more in a broad context, you know, researching different things, talking to different folks. I wanted to actually give you some resources here where you can find good opportunities. Um, there are several different sites you can use. Volunteer Match is a great one. You can um, search by area and specific uh, cause that you're interested in. For example, you know, disability, uh, veteran, environment, technology, you know, what whatever you might be interested in, and find an opportunity in your area that works for you. Um, there's also the, the site All for Good at serve.gov uh, that are great sources to match with internships. Uh, I'm sorry, volunteer experiences or volunteer internships. Uh, and then I put a couple other things on here. They seem very basic, but, but it was interesting when I was doing my research. Um, you can go to different Groups on Facebook, they have groups for just about everything. So if you're, if you're looking for a volunteer experience in a specific area that you care about that's particularly important to you, go to, to, go to Facebook and look at different groups that might be talking about opportunities that are available. And, and really, if you just kind of Google, like, for example, for myself, I'm very interested in disability employment. So I typed in, you know, disability employment. So uh, for me, when I typed that into Google, a lot of opportunities came up in the D.C. metro area because that's where I live. So if you just type into Google um, the, the type of opportunity that you're interested in, um, that might come up as part of this process. So just you know, use Google and Facebook groups. Um, I know if you, if you follow the news, you know that Mark Zuckerberg talked a lot this year about uh, groups being a big thing on Facebook and connecting people through communities. This is what he meant. So, so use those 
uh, to connect for volunteer opportunities throughout your community. So I'm just going to leave those resources up here. Um, and we'll go back to it for a minute, but I just for a second want to leave up our contact information and then I'll go back to the volunteer slide. But this is my contact information here. Um, my name is Jamie Lawson, I'm the account manager for Bender Consulting. Um, and so if you have any questions about uh, volunteer experiences, uh, you know, please uh, send them to me via email. Uh, my email is up here. Uh, you'll see it jwatts at benderconsult.com. I'm going to go back to the volunteer resources just so uh, you can look at those for a minute longer and maybe jot those down uh, for your future reference. Um, but with that, uh, I would like to say that if anybody has any questions today, you can certainly email those to us and we will we will get back to you with a response or, or post a response for anyone who might be interested in that. Um, but I hope these resources were useful and I just can't uh, speak highly enough about how important volunteer experience can be, especially as you're working to secure your first job. And um, it really is just a critical tool um, you know, throughout your career search. So, so with that, um, thank you very much for attending. Uh, please join us for our next uh, session, which I believe will be September 20th, if I'm not correct about that date, it will be going out shortly uh, for our next session. We invite you uh, to join us once again for that next month. And thank you to everyone who joined us today. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.